It is Wednesday. We are wizards, and today is a magical day we call Wizard Wednesday. Channeling in with Quantum Style through the Quantum Downs, this is Elf. Bear. And, and Dota. <laughs> Look Let's who's go. hosting today. Let's go. <laughs> Bear, are you in the Bear Cave right now? I am in the bear cave. I'm looking outside. The sun just came out. It's been raining in L.A. for a week straight. The sun is now upon us. Magic's happening. It's about damn time. We've got a huge show today. We've got cult questions. We've got updates. We've got Black Sands Racing. We've got 3D. And we've got banks crashing all around us. But first, let's jump into cult questions. And I think this first one I'm going to start with is very... Very important. It's from Night Owl Birdman, and it is for Bear. Uh, Bear, what in the epic hell have you been talking about? That's a that's a great little pun right there. Was that an owl that that I? Just yeah, heard? I was. I was supposed to hoot like an owl a, after I asked the question, and I just did that. So marking it off, <laughs> marking it off my to do list. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll have to ask Cosmic if that is uh, an actual an actual uh, soundbite from. An She'll owl, know. Just, She'll uh, know the exact species. <laughs> not just an AI uh, AI uh, translation. Yeah. Um, okay, so listen, going to GDC uh, Game Developer Conference. If if you don't know, it's in San Francisco. Uh, we have a busy week next week. We're gonna you know we'll talk about the event on Tuesday <clears throat> in a bit. But I'll be at GDC meeting with a bunch of different game developers. Some meetings with uh, Bisonic, our game developer, with the Runiverse, and, and some other um, just general meetings, right? And so one of those meetings happens to be Epic Games. Um, it's very exciting. I think, <clears throat> you know, the reason for this is in order for the Runiverse game to reach as many people as we need it to reach, which is everybody, because uh, everybody deserves to spend a little time uh, in the Runiverse. Um, you know, we need really fantastic distribution. So Epic, uh, the Epic Store, um, which supports, you know, if you play video games, which supports a whole bunch of video games, um, so much like a Steam, much like the Steam Store. Um, you know, if we can do a deal with them to help distribute the game, I think that would be absolutely massive. I know Jitsi has been um, preaching this for a long time. And and what's cool is Epic, you know, we knew this, but Epic just publicly announced that they already have about 20 blockchain-based games um, lined up to come on the store, which is fantastic, which means they are friendlies and we're not just going to sit down with them and they're going to shut the door in our faces because we start talking about Web3. So it's exciting. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk shop, tell them about what we're doing. They're going to tell us a little bit more about how they're thinking about the space. And uh, hopefully um, we get a little W out of this thing. Yeah, it's super exciting. Um, Jitsi shared that Epic Games announcement in the Discord the other day. And, and my immediate reaction was just like, the entire market is shitting itself. Crypto Twitter is losing its mind. And yet the NFT community is just quietly building like nothing's going on. And, 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 and it's happening. And, and I, I, I love to see it. I I'm just feeling so darn positive in the midst yep. of all this stuff. I, I couldn't be I couldn't feel more confident about, about what's going on. And and I just keep getting all of these fantastic notes <clears throat> from some of our favorite people in the space. Um, some are in the cult, some aren't. And and I'm just hearing the most fantastic things and feedback about how people think about us, how people sort of look at what we're building and I think this whole concept of like we've always sort of been building for where the space was headed, not where it was at the moment. Um, I think we're starting to see that stuff pay off. So it's quite exciting. It's very exciting. Um, and Bear, while you're on a roll, uh, not only have you been uh, behind the scenes working on gaming stuff, but you're also organizing a party. Do you want to Listen, tell us about that? Wizards. Wizards got to let off some steam sometimes. Do you agree? <laughs> I totally agree. Um, and I feel a little pent up. There's a lot of pressure in my body. I need to release some of that. 
Yeah. Um, and who better to do it with than a bunch of wizards? So um, we will be um, working with Locke and Nalgene, uh, who always are there by my side, making sure that this stuff goes off correctly and I don't do or say anything stupid, um, which is difficult. So kudos to them. Um, we're going to have a, a rooftop event next Tuesday, uh, March 21st. It will be happening during some NFT conference. Uh, it was called NFT LA. Then it was called Outer Edge. Um, and then they said we could speak on the panel if, if we paid them. And then I hated them. And so now we don't talk about them. Um, but it'll be happening during that time, during that week. Um, and it'll be from 9 to 12, open bar. We may have some fun gifts for people who show up. It's, it's not like the biggest of all spaces. Um, but... So, so please, like, when we send out this link, uh, pretty, I think about an hour after Wizard Wednesday ends, we'll send out an RSVP link. We'll put it in Discord first. Um, and please sign up. But what I would ask is don't sign up if you don't really plan on coming, just because there's limited space. So if you RSVP, we're going to really expect that that body is there with their plus one. And, and I just want to make sure that uh, we have enough room for the people who will actually show up. Um, but it'll be fun. Uh, and excited to sort of see everybody and um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah. Tanya has a question about the party. She's asking if me and or Dota will be there. I will be there. Dota, how about you? No, I'm not going to make it. Sorry. <laughs> Boo! But Bear and I did decide though, that we're going to make a rubber mask of Dota's face and, and pay someone to walk around. Yeah, Perfect. it's true. We are going to do that, and we're also—I don't think we can talk about it yet, but we're going to be—we're going to be shooting a really awesome uh, podcast, vodcast, while we're while you're in town, Elf. So uh, look out for that in, in the next month or two coming out. Hell yeah, um, yeah. And I just want to say I'm super excited to see some Wizards IRL. The last time I saw Wizards, obviously, was NFT NYC. I really hope to see some new faces, uh, familiar faces, all the faces. Um, so, yeah, it's very exciting. So, yeah, so just keep a lookout for the link. Um, we'll, we'll post it uh, an hour after Wizard Wednesday about. Yep. Awesome. Um, okay, other questions from the cult. Uh, Vmark is asking, uh, who is Scramps named after, if there's a real one? Uh, yeah, Scramps, the, uh, the little scrampy dog uh, who is a familiar in the Wizards collection. He is actually named after a real dog. Um, it's a brain drains dog. I believe it is a, um, uh, what's, what's that breed of dog? Uh, Brussels Griffin, maybe? Um, which I think... Those dogs are so funny looking. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's named after a real dog. It's uh, This is the collaborative legendarium. So you never know where lore uh, and uh, content is going to come from. I love Scramps. I've got to get a Scramps. <laughs> yeah, Scramps is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's Scramps. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, uh, Cheddar Robert. Uh, is is basically just saying we need to give Night Owl Birdman a shout out uh, for the alpha yeah. recaps every 24 hours. They are straight comedy. Um, yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, Dota, do you, do you have an opinion on Birdman? Oh, I don't even think yeah, they are comedy, but I think that's a compliment. I think they're just like incredibly useful. Yeah, I would love for someone to kind of tweet them out. It's, it's actually very helpful. You kind of can scroll through and find Night Owl's uh, like, you know, summaries of the last 24 or 12 hours. And it's just like really everything you need to ever know on crypto, you can read from those messages. So thank you, Night Owl. Yeah, that's actually what I just said in The Secret Tower, which is comedic, yes, but also incredibly insightful. Um, I know I know, Jitsi great. likes him, and I think we lost Jitsi. He was up here a minute ago. I'm just shocked you didn't play the, the owl soundbite again. I should have. I already <laughs> closed the window. I need a soundboard, man. Come on, <laughs> get man. it together. Jeez. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Snoop Dogg is asking, uh, how did you choose which heads are in both the Wizard and the Warrior collection and don't use the words quantum synchronicity? Okay, we're going to talk about quantum mm -hmm. synchronicity later. Uh, but as far as the Wizard and Warrior heads, uh, you know, it was just a gut feeling. Um, 
th that's all I can really say. Gut feeling, trust it, it'll get you far. Um, well, I, I don't mind talking about this too, which is that like, I think part of it was we wanted to have, I guess what you're asking is around like the overlap, like some of the kind of wizard heads have, let's call it like a, uh, a port over to warriors. Right. And I think, um, well, for one, even if they look like they're the same head, they're not because the pixel sizes are actually different. Wizards are 50 by 50. Warriors are 60 by 60. Um, two, so they're all redrawn, even if they look the same. Two, I think that like we particularly didn't want to kind of, let's say, devalue or inflate the supply of a lot of the, the original heads, right? There's no, um, you know, there's a lot of the heads that don't really appear. You know, one of the things that kind of like came up in conversation was, for example, is like, oh, I don't own the, the Dota wizard. Is there a Dota warrior? And it was like, no, clearly not. Like Dota is a singular kind of character in the universe. There's no Dota warrior. Um, you know, maybe there's maybe there's a race of fuzzy puppets out there somewhere in the universe <laughs> yeah. like where, his, where his family came from. We'll see. Uh, but there was not going to be a one off Dota warrior. So I think that and then a lot of the, the, the warriors also just don't make sense. Right. So, for example, um, there's lots of like some, sort of the creatures from the the universe that are quite magical that it didn't make sense to have a warrior that doesn't have control of magic maybe you could talk a little bit of some of that because i don't think for example there's no skeleton warriors am i right about that i, no, I don't remember. think there are no um yeah yeah you know i it, it, for, like one of my like just creative um guidelines is like I love creating systems and structures in any sort of given creative um, uh, arena, but then I love to like mess it up and break it. Um, and so that's why you'll see like skulls in the wizard's collection, but also in the souls collection, you'll see wizard kobolds, but then there's also a lot of kobold warriors. Um, the hat colors, like they don't follow the perfect, uh, uh, standard hues on the on the on the light spectrum, like because brown is in there, but then again, brown used to be orange. Like, you know, there, there's all these fun little wrinkles that I like to put into these systems uh, that I just think makes a world more rich. Um, and so that's why I cross pollinated a lot of the heads in the collections. Uh, it's surprising that there's any cobalt wizards at all, frankly. It is. It is. And, and so, no, ex I, lo I love that you brought that up. Like the idea of a kobold wizard is almost an oxymoron. Um... <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but like at the same time, like, like maybe you have to be a dumbass to like really wield magic in an effective way. I mean, you know. It's uh <laughs> again sorry Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the quote of the week. Maybe you have to be a dumbass to wield real magic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean the point is is like it's it's not like necessarily always a purely intellectual pursuit. Um you know, there, there, there's there's the archetype of the uh the uh the the the, the wise fool, right? Um, there, there's a lot of like wisdom in being foolish. Um, I, I love that archetype. Uh, so anyway, we're, we're getting very deep into lore. Um, but yeah, good question, Snoop Dogg. Um, so let's see, I, I actually think maybe that's all. Oh no, Tanya has a question. Uh, Tanya says, how is it halfway through March already? Uh, time, uh, flows differently for everyone. Um, I could answer this in several different ways. Uh, the planet is just that far in its orbit, and um, humans call that halfway through March. Um, but clearly, Tanya is perceiving time in, in a much different way, as I think we all are. Uh, so I don't know, Tanya. I mean, it's a mystery. It, it just, it truly is. Um, uh, okay, I think that's actually all the questions that I see. Um, okay, so yeah, let me, let me pivot to this next thing. Uh, just a fun thing happened yesterday that I did. Um, so A16Z, the, uh, preeminent venture capital fund, they were doing a workshop yesterday in Santa Monica. Um, and they invited one of us from Magic Machine, uh, to come and sort of teach a panel of young entrepreneurs about media in Web3. 
So I went um, and it was great and I really enjoyed it. And there was even a film crew there. Uh, and so this may appear in a documentary at some point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and brag and say I slayed this panel. Um, but really the most fun observation was uh, I brought a really large bag of Forgotten Runes swag. Um, and I handed it out to a lot of people there. And, you know, first of all, like tech startup swag is usually kind of lame, in my opinion, because it's usually like just a boring corporate logo on a solid colored T-shirt with maybe some pithy log line. Uh, but thankfully, Forgotten Runes swag is not that. Um, in fact, you know, we might even not want to call it swag. It's because it's just way cooler than that. You know, we have really cool shit. We call it drip. The, the, perfect. Yes, our drip is call better Gucci. than all the other drip. Um, yeah, because we have like we have cool characters on it, and we have uh, fun phrases like "Behold my quantum style." Um, I brought stickers. I brought comic books. Um, and, and I just got to say that like everyone there fucking loved it. Like they were they went into a frenzy, um, just like like trying to grab a shirt or a sticker. Uh, and, and it was just like a really fun moment uh, seeing people react to, to our, our drip. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, well done uh, to all the drip designers on Magic Machine. What, uh, what sort of stuff did you talk about on your panel? Uh, yeah, they were. So they asked a lot of questions just about um, like how to build a strong community. That was probably the most interesting part of the panel to me. <laughs> um they asked about like like how should a web3 uh project think about media beyond nfts um which obviously magic machine and forgotten runes has a lot to say about that um they asked about royalties <laughs> which was a very sticky subject um a lot of the young entrepreneurs there had, you know, just their own questions. Uh, another interesting question that came up was like, like the inherent contradiction of, of NFT collections, which is, you know, the value of the tokens are often tied to the supply of the token and you never want to uh, inflate that. And yet you want to scale into a larger audience as much as you can. How do you do that without inflating the token supply? Um, so yeah, those were the sorts of questions we we talked about. Uh, uh, okay, I guess that's all there is on that. Um, I do know that you came into the bear cave right afterwards, and you were glowing. You were like, you were like doing basically doing jumping jacks in the bear cave. You were so stoked about how it went. It made me very. Oh, happy. I was super stoked. Super stoked. Um, yeah, just because, again, the swag, the just the receptivity of it. Um, I also met one of the people from uh, the CryptoPunks team. Um, she was awesome. Uh, and CryptoPunks loves Forgotten Runes. Um, let me just put that out there. Is, is receptivity a word, by the way? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm teasing. Sorry, it is now. Yeah, it is now. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, let's talk about 3D for a little bit. Um, it's getting closer and closer to being released. Uh, we talked about it a little bit last week. Um, there was a little bit of I don't know, not really controversy, just kind of kind of an open question about like how to distribute these. Um, and the question on the table was, do we make them open source and downloadable to everyone or do we token gate them? Um, and, and we, you know, we, we, we said, you know, if, if you have ideas on this, please DM us. Uh, and, and we certainly got some DMs and we got some really good arguments. Um, and so, you know, I, I want to say ultimately we decided to leave them totally open source and downloadable to everyone. But but let me sort of like go through the reasons why maybe we wouldn't do that and then why we ultimately decided to do that. Um, so, so the argument to keep them token gated and limited 
uh, or limit the use of every character to the owners is, is, is a good argument. Um, number one, it gives exclusive utility to the token. Um, obviously, token utility is one of the many ways to make a token valuable. Uh, so naturally, giving this exclusive right to the use of the 3D rig uh, makes sense. Um, furthermore, uh, if anyone in the world can just use a character you own, uh, it may feel uh, less like you actually own it. Um, another good argument to Token Gate is I myself have long argued that this is, this, it is this very sense of ownership that actually incentivizes people to create and build. Um, this was one of the key points in my TED talk. Uh, and I, I basically said that it's this new layer of ownership. That's one of the reasons people are so inspired to build and create for their characters. It makes them feel special. Um, and so I think those are like the two main reasons to token gate the 3D models. Um, but let me, let me tell you why we decided against that. Um, but before I do, let me just say, there is actually one instance where they will remain token gated. Uh, and that is in other gaming metas. Um, and so when you uh, connect your wallet to, say, Nifty Island or some other 3D meta, uh, you will obviously only be able to play as a character that you own. Um, you can't run around these metas with other people's digital property. Um, there may be other tools and ways around this, but that's sort of out of our control. Um, but as far as making them openly downloadable from our website, uh, so first it should be noted that the pixel walk cycles are currently openly downloaded uh, to anyone who wants them. Uh, and keeping this open has actually been a huge catalyst for cult content. Um, everything from really small animations to entire derivative collections to mini games um, leaving th these pixel assets open and available to all has been really good. Um, but also, and, and this is the real sticking point for me, this is actually what solves all of it. Um, so we are designing this 3D dashboard in such a way that all of the relevant information uh, on the character is immediately visible. Uh, the name of the character, the token ID, the owner of the character, and even the lore is all displayed alongside the 3D character rig. If a stranger wants to download your character, they should know who that character is and who owns it. Because to me, this is not just about the 3D character rig. The, the 3D character rig is just a mechanical component. Um, and, and that mechanical component serves a greater purpose, which is world building and storytelling. Um, and it is that world building that is by far the most important thing this entire project does. I, I mean, even yesterday at this panel, I, I kept coming back to this. This, this, is what, this is what makes Forgotten Runes special. I mean, it's nothing without this. And so it, it's you all in the cult. It's the creative capital that you're spending on these characters that you own. That, that's really the only important thing here. The pencils, the pixels, the polygons, polygons it's, it's all in service to that. Um, and so, you know, that said, I, I hope this eases some potential consternation you may have about making these totally open to the public. Just rest assured that like whoever uses your character, they're gonna know who that character is, who owns it, um, and, and, and they're, gonna, they're gonna see all the love and care that you've put into them. Um, so anyway, that's my spiel. I've been talking a lot. Dota Bear, you guys want to chime in? Yeah, I think that with the when I think about the 3D models, I, I think that it, it's really important to kind of um, understand that the memes are more important than any physical thing, right? It's this like pl the platonic ideal of your wizard is more important than the, like the the any particular image of the wizard, and in fact maybe replace platonic ideal with just like ownership of the, of the private key that controls the NFT token really is, is kind of the meaningful value part. Um, and, 
like maybe it's maybe it's like the more physical value part, right? The like the value of the NFT is outside of just looking at the asset, right? It comes from the provenance value of the token. It comes from token holder benefits like you know airdrops, staking rewards. Like it comes from the idea that when you own that token, you have this community belonging, right? You have Discord access, but more than that, you have sort of like the status that kind of gets associated with that. Um, you know, it comes through commercial use of the IP. And, and, and just because someone can sort of download the 3D model doesn't give them a commercial right to your wizard or even to that model. So one of the things that we're kind of talking about 3D models is that, you know, it, they, it, they're basically the same rights by which the rest of the wizards are under or licensed under, which is you can download the images. Anyone can download the images and use them for non-commercial use. I basically think that like the um, kind of the nouns model of like provenance value or really this idea of like creative commons is is right in so far as it's this idea, which is it's worse to be ignored than to be uh, than to be overshared. And and by eliminating barriers for people to like use and share your ideas, um, then then you'll be able to like sort of replicate the meme, right? In the age of infinite content, the risk is not that it's overused and stolen, but rather that it's like ignored and never seen at all. And so it's the this premise is that the value is actually increased when it's shared, not decreased. What I think CC0 gets wrong, though, is this idea that like, um, if you make well, is that they basically give up this this idea of commercial the commercial opportunity to the IP, um, uh, and sort of in in uh, in our case, of course, we see that there's commercial value in the IP, and that will still always stay with with the owner. Yep, yep, yeah. I I talked yesterday a lot about culture and how valuable culture is, and about how. You know the the metaverse and 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 NFTs. It, it's really all just a vector for culture, and the way for cu culture to become valuable is simply that it spreads. Mimetic culture is is the driver for for all media, um, and so you know I I, th I think you're going to want your characters, your IP, to spread far and wide. Um, and again, for me, it's just like as long as they anyone, any person who would download your character can see up front who owns it, who what's the name of this character, what is their biography, then that to me is a, is a really good solve for this. I agree. Yeah. And I think that like, you know, I think that one of the things that we're learning as we go um, is this idea that like if things are too complicated, people will just opt for something that's more simple. Um, like it's the same idea around like kind of, um, I don't know, even how Amazon or e-commerce might think about a shopping cart, which is like you want one click checkout. And what you don't want is for someone to have to like read through and understand this like web of kind of IP rights in order to be able to like use your ideas. This is why you see, for example, um, you know, let's say Moonbirds and Toads and in sort of like every, there's all sorts of derivatives, but you also see them like everywhere is because people just kind of know right out of the gate. They're like, I know it's CC zero. I can just copy it. And there's basically no consequences, no problems. And so I think that, um, you know, that's one of the things that I want to actually avoid with the 3D models is I actually want for people to know, like, if you're building a game and you want to use, you know, my wizard to as like a character in your game and it's sort of this like single player quest or whatever, you can just download it, just download it and use it. It saves you time and it spreads our ideas. Um, and I think that that's a really powerful force. Um, and then, you know, as long as it's non-commercial, right? Once it becomes commercial, then we'll sort of deal with kind of making sure that the value is spread in the right direction. It looks like Night Owl Birdman keeps trying to come up, but he, he can't connect. Yeah, I know that Jitsi was having the same problem, too. There's just been a lot of, like, people are not able to connect. So sorry, everyone. Um, I, I know that the Black Sands, uh, I think Legatus wants to come up eventually. So Legatus, I, I, whenever you're ready, um, try to connect. Yeah, I'm inviting I'm inviting Jitsi. I'm inviting Black Sands. Uh, I'm inviting people up, but it doesn't seem to be taking. Damn it. Hold on. Mm -hmm. 
It's just going to be the oh, three of Black us. Sands, Black yeah. Sands is up. There's Black Sands. Night, night Owls. Hey. hey, everyone. How's it going? How weird. It's, it, hey. it's just the cobalt. Hey, what's going on? Hey, uh, so Black Sands, uh, you know, I, I think everybody at this point knows who Black Sands is. One of the uh, uh, best world building projects out there for, for Forgotten Runes. You know, it's far more than just pony races. Black Sands is, is a full... Uh, a full, uh, I don't know, lore effort. Um, so you, you've got a, a brand new event, uh, a new race coming up. Uh, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, no, thank you. Alf. Definitely. Black Sun is, uh, as, as you guys know, is a city in the universe. So much more than, than the pony races and much more we continue building. But you're right. Today is a special day because uh, uh, the races are are back. We, we had some fun with racing in 2022. And finally, after our mint started for Mecha Ponies, we are, we are back to racing in 2023. And before I go into, into any details, I want to take a second to, to thank all the people that actually worked towards this. Uh, not only the artists that worked on the art of our collection, but special thanks to all, our, all, our, all the devs that worked on the game and on the site. So from Bill, that has been literally working two months nonstop to make everything work, which I'm super impressed when, when things actually go so smooth. And then also Pleasure, that has been helping since the very beginning, but also very recently Pedro and Notmok that have come in and really brought Black Sand to another level. So really a lot going on, a lot of people involved, and I'm really thankful for everyone. And now before we go into the details, also want to, Thank Leaf for being so good with his sounds and music. It really brought Black Sand to another level. So pause there for a second. Thank you, everyone. The cult is amazing. We literally just come together and we magic, we make stuff. And, and it's been great. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I said it before, but I just, I love all the new ponies out there. Um, they're so cool, and, and I love the one of ones. Um, the, the, like I, the, lately, I've been seeing the little dwarf ponies. Which <laughs> is like it's it's just so extra. I mean, a pony is already a dwarf horse, and now you're dwarfing the ponies. They're freaking adorable. <laughs> Indeed, they are. Master made something unique with the. Uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but pig my ponies. Oh yeah, pick me pony. Yeah. <laughs> pick me pony. <laughs> yeah, they're just so funny. And two have been found, by the way. So there are still more to be minted, which also. Yeah, is... <laughs> speaking of, ha has my goat been minted yet? Your goat has not been okay. minted yet. So okay. Okay. someone can still grab it. Someone <laughs> can still uh, can still get him and. Uh, every single one-on-one will have special abilities in the races, which actually brings me to my next point, uh, or my previous point, that the races are actually back on. Today we started the race, um, and registration is open, so everybody can still go register on the website, which is actually a really fun experience that has been put together by the team. Uh, with some very fun sound effects, so make sure to do it with sound on. To register, you just really need a Mecha Pony or a 101. Soon enough, also, the Forgotten Rules Ponies will be available, available again to race. Uh, but, so you just need to go on the website, get the Mecha Pony uh, either minted or just, if you have it, just go on the website, register. And then on our channel in the Forgotten Rules Discord, you can just go and play. Uh, I think maybe one shout out to to mala because they won the first championship in 2022 and apparently they're already leading the race today so that is just very impressive so mala congrats again for a great start <laughs> yeah no i don't know uh mala seems uh undefeatable at this point um it's gonna take uh, a whole herd of pygmy ponies or something <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> or or maybe uh, Josh the Blind can make an epic comeback. I, I don't know. I've been watching Josh all week. He's great. <laughs> Is Josh still blind? He's still blind. He's doing better. 
he doesn't eat the blue bonnets out here. So if you don't know, Texas has these like flowers like called blue bonnets. And um, they, um, they you, you see them like really like tacky moms will use them for like decorations, like wallpaper or something. But actually in real life, they're really quite beautiful. They're like this vibrant, vibrant blue. Um, but Josh does not eat them. So it's really fun. I go head over there in the morning, hop in the pool, go feed Josh, walk through the blue bonnets. It's, I'm really living my best life. Uh, Josh, if you're not going to eat the blue bonnets, you need to get on the racetrack. Um, cause you almost got last place last time. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Can, do you ever, do you ever, do you ever ride Josh or is that, is that a no go? Uh, not, he can't see. So it's kind of not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Um, well, Legatus, this, this sounds awesome. Uh, is, uh, is there anything else you want to say about, uh, the, the races? Yes. Uh, we, We'll make it a point to see who wins between Bear, Dot, and Elf in this race. So make sure to register your, your mega ponies. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, yeah, I, I almost don't want to register because we all know what's going to happen if I register. I just, you're, it's just, I don't want to embarrass you, Elf. I I, I, you're going to do worse than a blind horse? Is that, is that what you're going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Maybe last thing I want to say, actually, the, the 101 that was made by Tanya and Cosmic has been very recently minted and is the next one to be revealed. So really excited for everyone to see that because it's an amazing one that come from, from two amazing artists. Oh, uh, okay. You, you're not going to tell us what it is? Nope. Very soon, though. Very let, soon. Me, let me guess. It's, uh, it's a bird. Mm, interesting. Could it be the very first bird, bird ever? Mm, I don't know. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking through the Black Sands TL. Uh, the <laughs> raptor that was recently minted is amazing. Uh, Hos something. Hostilian, is that his name? Yes. Custom Years, oh. one of the Custom Years 101s. Oh, Beautiful. And, and then I see, uh, let's see, the Blocko Wormo. <laughs> um, that that bear snake is riding. <laughs> yeah, that's that's indeed Blocko's uh, 101 special oh, one indeed. Man. That's so good. I one of my favorites is is Quavius the duck. That one is so ridiculous. That is really really amazing from from Australian. Which uh, <laughs> last minute news? There's gonna be another 101 from from them coming up. So, and that's. That's amazing too. So I'm looking forward for that to be minted as well. Yeah, so many good ones. So many good ones. Oh, and, and then and then the bicycle. Oh, God. so many good ones. Yeah, the bicycle. The whole of cats should own the bicycle, but they don't want it apparently. So. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole of cats. That's a whole other, whole other thing. Um, okay. Uh, anything else? That's it. Thank you so much for the time and hope everybody enjoys the races. Should be fun. Awesome, Legatus. Thank you. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the banks crashing. I, I, I want to dive into this for just a minute. Um, and, and I just want to start off right away saying, obviously, uh, the banks crashed because we on Wizard Wednesday were talking about the shadowy banking cabals who control the world behind the scenes. Shortly after we discussed all the conspiracies around that, the banks had a massive run. Quantum synchronicity or reality? You decide. Um, but Bear and Dota, uh, you know, we don't have to get too deep into it, but like how freaking stressed out were, were we this weekend? <laughs> so stressed. What, what weekend? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <seriously. laughs> Yeah, it was nuts. Uh, Magic, we were, yeah, it was, it was awful. It was awful. But, you know, we, we don't have to get into all of the details. All I really want to say is, like, you can't kill a wizard. Um, we survived. And we're going to thrive. And, um, yeah, it was, it was just. It, it was, yeah, I'll talk about yeah. it. I, I'll talk about all the Go details. For, it. for me, you know, for me, one of the things that we've always tried to do is be as like transparent as possible with regards to like on-chain funds. You know, 
for me, I don't think that it's very productive to kind of like open Magic Machines books of the entire cult because there's just like only downside. But like for the most part, what we've tried to do is sort of like have a, a Gnosis safe where we had like several million dollars for, um, you know, this past year. Um, and as things have kind of like gone sideways, we've started pulling more money off. So, for example... Um, gosh, I can't even remember the last time. The last time things went wonky, like in between Luna and this, I can't even remember what it was. I was telling people in the call, I was like, hey, I, we've got this money in this notes to save. Here's the address. I'm pulling some off because I'm being a little bit like skittish about it. Um, the same thing then, well, I've been telling people for a long time, like, oh, yeah, you know, we have a couple million dollars in USDC. We're fine. We're fine because, you know, USDC is back to 80 percent by treasuries. There's no problem, no problem, no problem. Right. And then, of course, this weekend, it's all of a sudden like, oh, shoot, like there's a problem. Like USDC is whatever, 90, 80, 70 cents. Um, and I think that like I there's basically like every reason to believe there was like all these like very rational reasons to believe on like Friday, Saturday, um, even Sunday morning. That is like, look, the market is overreacting. Um, and USDC will probably come back. While at the same time, basically looking at it and saying, um, you know, we've actually never seen like all of the stable coins that have kind of like lost the peg so hard have um, have failed. And even if USDC does have these treasuries to back it, who's to say that kind of like by the time the final tally is counted that we're going to get, you know, uh, 90 cents on the dollar, 95 cents on the dollar. Whatever. Like at some point the open market was actually like 97, 98 cents on the dollar. And it was just like, for me, I actually reached the point where I was actually able to pay um, a few tens of thousands of dollars to kind of secure the bag versus like subjecting myself to, uh, well, Monday morning when it was kind of known that the entire market would be sort of fleeing from USDC. So I actually ended up cutting um, all of the USDC that we had um, and basically getting it out through a bank account another way. Um, and it cost some money versus just like waiting until Monday. And, you know, I think hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Like Monday morning rolls around and all the people are taking victory laps saying, oh, this was like so obvious, so obvious, so obvious. And I can tell you what it was. To me, it was not at all obvious that USDC was going to like survive the night. I think that like legislators did the right thing and kind of bailing out the kind of uh, the banks or at least like by ensuring deposits beyond the 250K limit. Um, but I think that like you could you don't have to look very far in history to know that like regulators aren't going to do the right thing fast enough all, all the time. And so for me, it was really more about just like I'm going to pay this extra margin to, to make sure that that like magic me machine doesn't lose, you know, two years of runway or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it was, there was a lot, there was a very, very stressful weekend, a lot of just trying to like protect the bag. And I, I know that a lot of people were even more stressed out than we were. It was incredibly stressful. Um, very tough talks were had. <laughs> um, everything's fine now. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we don't have to get too deep into that. I, I, one thing I do want to call out, though, is like, to me, it was super. Here's what's super interesting, uh, that the crypto market rallied on mm. the on the, these banks crashing. And like the narrative is seemingly uh, people wanted to put their funds into safe havens and they turned to Bitcoin and ETH. Um, is do you, do you in your opinion, do you think there's more to this narrative or do you think that's it? Mm, I think, well, what do you mean? There's always more. What do you mean? Well, just, are you talking about like the, the like the, the decoupling and like crypto representing something that is yeah, I, I, safer I'm, I'm, than I'm, the traditional system? I, I'm simply saying like, did the did the crypto market rally simply because people saw Bitcoin and ETH as a safe haven? Is, is it is the no, I don't, uh, no, I don't think okay. so. Go no. for it. They saw stable coins as a risk. The mar This is like a fake rally. That's just like stable coins are a risk. And even your own bank account is a risk because like it wasn't clear until like it's still not even that clear, like to what degree over 250 K your bank account is sort of insured. And so that's what was weird is it was like, OK, let, we have two million dollars. We're going to pull it out. We're going to pull it out where on Sunday, the, the on Sunday or like even Saturday. 
the question was literally like, are we going to pull that $2 million into our regional bank when there's actually a decent chance our regional bank might fail? And it was just like, no, like the only safe haven was to go into ETH because it's like, well, at least in like within a couple of years, ETH is going to be better. And that's what I think you're basically seeing the pump in, in Bitcoin and ETH right now is just something like uh, it's not so much that it's like pff, the, the traditional banking narrative is over. It's like the traditional banking system is like at, in a really precarious position, right? You're seeing. Uh, you're seeing that like Wells Fargo is like putting out a, a bond to like raise some money. You're seeing uh, Credit Suisse is like having stress where their like biggest investor won't add anymore. You're basically seeing this like contagion throughout the entire traditional bank system. So in that sense, it's but it's not so much that it's like I'm buying Bitcoin because I believe in that. So maybe you're right. Right. It's like I'm buying Bitcoin because everything else is like a risk. Yeah, that, that's that's all I'm saying is like. Did the crypto market I suppose, rally? Then I suppose you're right. Because yeah. <laughs> people saw Bitcoin and ETH as safe. Oh, sure. All right, sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, but but it's interesting because like, you know, it's it's one thing for all the Bitcoin evangelists and the people who have faith in crypto that, you know, they've been trotting out that narrative for almost a decade now, which is like, this is the store of value. This is the safe haven asset because it's not subject to the, the whims and the fallibilities of human beings. You know, it's one thing to say that, but to like actually see it in action and, and, and people put their money where their mouth is, that's quite another. Um, and this was like a, a major test to that, that narrative. Um, and, and so it's just my question is like, is that actually why the rallies market because they believe in the narrative or is there something else going on? I don't know. I think, you know, I think it's, I think it's both, right? I think we were, the most important thing for us was protecting the company's funds so we could continue doing what we wanted to do for, you know, for the next couple of years. And I think like in the short term, yeah, we, we, we thought ETH was the best possible place to do it in a very short amount of time and i think that's what we're seeing now and to be but, clear we've had a lot of money in fiat already um yeah that's not like this was the only two million dollars that we had but two, whatever two million dollars still two million dollars right that's like yeah exactly years, like, runway for our company so it's like totally. you don't want to lose that no that so that's the context but i think to your point elf it, it's like I think that's part of the reason why things are – we came to the same conclusion that a lot of people came to, and that is, well, we're scared to even put this in our bank, which is – so the answer is like yes in that regard to your question. But then it's like we're not willing to put that $2 million up and, and, and like sort of walk through the, the potential volatility over the next year or two and just keep it in ETH, right? Like it was like we we're parking it for a moment, and then we're going to put it back into the traditional – part of it at least – into the traditional banking system. So I think it's like, it's a more, um, it's a more sort of layered. I don't think it's just like a black and white answer, I guess is, is my point. Yep. It was stressful. I, don't know. I think that like, I don't, well, yeah, I think ahead. that, well, I do think that it is basically overall bullish for crypto, right? It's it's very clearly bullish for crypto insofar as like, uh, yeah. okay. So for example, one of the things that we're talking about is like, well, we can't put our money in a real bank account. First off, that's crazy, crazy. It's 2023 and we're saying we can't put our money in a real bank account because we, unless we go Insanity. to- Unless we go to a structurally important bank, right? So now we're talking about, uh, you know, Chase and whatever, the big four. And uh, so that's also a problem. It's like, well, why don't we just go buy treasuries directly? Like if we can get 4% on our money per year and then have like pretty quick access to it, why don't we just go get treasuries? And so you're, it's basically this situation where like uh, there's there's really like two banks. But one bank, which is like you bank with the Fed who prints the money and you like get an earn because you just buy a bunch of treasuries. And then you just keep a bank account that's 250K for more operating expenses. And then the other bank is basically Bitcoin, Bitcoin and ETH. Right? We keep our money on chain because at least that's something that can't be uh, inflated away by sort of bureaucrats. And so I do think it is like this historic moment for cryptocurrency and it'll just take some time to play out. And I think we, I think, 
you know, one thing to th- that's always so reassuring in, in very stressful times when there's a lot of money sort of at stake to be able to get on the phone with you <clears throat> and Alf and to have like uh, these very high pressure conversations and having everybody keep cool and sort of be able to work through this methodically and be on the same page is just such a pleasure. It's not yeah, rare. So- it's not rare. I yeah, mean, rare. one of the it's things rare. that one of the things that we'll do basically is we fire up a Google Doc or a Notion Doc or whatever. And we're like, okay, what are our options? You know, number one, we just decide to wait it out. We bet that, you know, USDC uh, comes through, right? And, you know, th- turns out actually that would have been the like highest output, right? It's USDC did come through. That's actually incredibly bullish for USDC that they sort of suffered from this depegging mechanism and then both Coinbase and Circle and everyone came through and, and it worked fine. So that's actually a really important stress testing moment for USDC that will in time instill a bit of confidence in the, in the stable coin. But at the same time, I think that like, you know, you're basically playing this uh, even a, a similar bet to the people that, you know, when 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 USDC depegged to like, let's say 90 cents and then everyone's like, oh, this is the easiest play ever. I'm going to make 10 percent on my money. I'm going to sell my ETH and buy USDC. Well, like you did that. But what you know, that's not really very clear thinking in terms of like a risk and reward payoff. Right. Because what you're basically saying is like, I am risking 100 percent of my money for to earn 10 percent that's like a bad risk reward trade-off in terms of like you know that's not kelly optimal of like a uh, of a trade to make and in fact the people that did that they made 10 percent on their usdc but eth actually went up by more than 10 percent, and so you ended up behind for it's as if you just held on to eth anyway right i think in our case too we're not trying to kind of trade magic machine as you know we have crypto exposure but that's not our main business is not like sort of speculating on these markets. And so I think for us, it was something like, well, that option doesn't really work because like, you know, we don't want to put like a year of runway at risk because we just like w- were, you know, sucking hopium, for example. Right. So we'll sit down and we'll be like, OK, well, we could do this. We could do this. We could do this much, this much. So, yeah, it's part of the process with us over this weekend is just like sitting down writing it all out. And then I think what actually happened is we wrote out and we decided one thing on Friday night. We woke up on Saturday and we, I'd had a change of heart and we worked through a second, you know, we had some new information and we worked through a second, uh, a second set of circumstances there. So yeah, it's, it, it's good to have a crew of people who can kind of work through those things. And I would, and I think we said it, we said it to ourselves a bunch of times. Like I would, I would make that move a hundred times over. Oh yeah. yeah. L- losing a little bit of money to secure the, the help. Uh, again, it's not all of our money at all, but like it's a significant amount. I will lose a little bit off the top to secure, yeah. you know, the instabilize the, the greater good every time. Yeah, exactly. Like even when it was Sunday night and the they'd said they would, you know, the, the like the Fed basically said that they would insure the accounts. They said, you know, uh, Silicon Valley Bank was money was going to come out, all these things. Right. Even after all those announcements. USDC on the open markets was still only 98 cents. And even then I was like, I still would do it. If it, uh, it would be better to get out now Sunday night and to pay a little bit of extra because you really don't know. Everyone's going to say that. So that way, well, it's not worse Monday morning. You don't want to be the last person out when the fire exit opens. Um, Damn straight. Yep. Yeah, uh, so, so there's your transparency. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, the point is, is uh, we survived. You can't kill a wizard, and uh, we're here to stay. Uh, not even a bank run is gonna take us down. Um, so yeah, I just, I just wanted to pivot back to 3D real quick. There's been some uh, chatter in the secret tower. Um, Night Owl was trying to come up, and and basically he wrote out what he was gonna say. Um, essentially, he having the the pixel walk cycles has really helped him make cult content. Um, but a, a lot of people in, uh, the secret tower are talking around this idea of like, maybe on the website, like making some kind of toggle or checkbox, uh, to like give consent to use the character rig. Um, you know, th- this is actually something I thought about myself. I- I'm not so sure we'll do it, at least in this V1. If things do get out of control, um, maybe we'll do that. Um, 
but I, I, I think I think just my my gut reaction to like not doing it right away is that I think most people by default just won't even bother to toggle the permission on, um, even though they maybe don't care if their character is used. Um, I- yeah, if I were to do something like that, I would be one, I would wait until it's a problem. And then two, I, th- I would still default on. That if you're just like, I don't want someone to use my wizard, then I would have it toggle off. Right. And then even then, if the wizard changes hands, I would flip it back on again. That I would actually require each new owner to to kind of close it off. I think open by default is the right approach. Because we're talking non-commercial here. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, it, it's interesting. It, it's very, if people feel very passionately about this, like having a, a toggle of some kind, um, I guess DM us, but I don't know. It just, it just hasn't really seemed to be a huge problem yet. Um, so I don't know. Ongoing conversation. Uh, yeah, for sure. We'll negotiate it as a community. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about some, some cult content. I've been, uh, reading the, uh, the infamous cult chronicle today. It's, uh, I can't believe it's week eight of the cult chronicle. Um, yeah, I'm insane, Tanya. I, I just, again, thank you so much for doing this. I love it. Um, and Tanya, I hope, I hope I get to see you at the party. I, I know you, I think you live around here. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, you and Eagle, um, maybe we can convince the DJ at the party to play, uh, Eagle song. Um, do <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Or Bear, maybe you can mm-hmm. perform it live. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna sing it. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, Eagle will sing it, and then I'll come in on the little on the, with my big, with my oversized uh, clock. Um, necklace. Okay, seriously, that would be amazing if we could make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So let's go over cult content. Uh, yeah. So obviously, Black Sands Racing, uh, a new race is 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 occurring. Um, we talked about that. Uh, Daniela Illustra did a really nice piece about the Black Sands recently. Um, always amazing work from Daniela. Uh, and then uh, speaking of always amazing work, uh, Markifine uh, dropped a really cool um, uh, work, uh, a process video of uh, one of his illustrations. Uh, Markifine, always amazing work. Um, Emma did these really cute uh I guess like em- emojis of, of her swamp wizard, uh, just freaking adorable. I, I think Emma's uh, wizard might be one of the cutest in the entire cult. Um, uh, Rune's TCG, uh, WizzyTac uh, put himself in uh, on, on one of the Elysian trainer cards. Uh, and a, a beautiful card. Um, and then speaking of TCG, uh, Meeple Dad. Okay, I, I love the stuff Meeple Dad makes. He made this really cool uh, placemat to play T- Rune's TCG. Um, I know that I still love my placemat of, uh, of the, uh, the Runiverse map. Um, Dota, I saw you using your placemat recently, right? Yeah, it was so fun. Uh, my daughter and I have been playing Magic more. She's getting pretty good. And uh, yeah, we played out on the picnic table and had some snacks and played Magic. And it was really fun because we have a picnic table. And well, picnic tables aren't super flat and they get really dusty with pollen and acorns and stuff. And so it was very convenient to have that Meeple Dad Forgotten Runiverse Map playmat because it was just so clean and we had a nice time. Yep, yep, yeah, I love the placemats. Um, and then uh, Entropy, um, Entropy EQ, uh, I think he, he dropped this, uh, like, it's, Shadow it's, Wizard Money guy. Shadow Money Wizard Dude, yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say. Shadow, Shadow Wizard Money Gang, get it right, brother. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah a, a freaking phenomenal. Uh, just so good. Um, yeah, excellent piece of cult content. Uh, and then Malevolent uh, did this really awesome uh, sketch of his wizard. Malevolent, I got, I got to say, I, I love your wizard. I, I love the, the, the evil whiz face, like the green wizard. 
Um, and, and, and your wizard is just one of my favorites in the whole collection. The look, the lore that you've written, just all the content around it. I freaking love Malevolent. It's, so, it's such a good character. Um, and then uh, CEO of Runeball. Um, it looks like we've got a prototype of a Runeball uh, physical board game in production. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll we'll uh, stay stay tuned for that. Um, uh, Jitsi uh, Flash Step uh, has a really great AI rendition of one of his warriors. Um, just a beautiful AI piece. Uh, there's been some really good ASCII art coming out lately. Um, uh, Bob Bedilli, PhD. I don't know if I said that name right. Uh, but it, it looks like uh, this was an inscription of uh, the ASCII art that's on our original wizard contract. Uh, Dota, here's an ordinal. Uh, your reaction? I think that it's a... It's like an ENS name for Bitcoin. Like, it's like a dot .sats name. And so they made, they registered, like, the ENS name... But as like, but it's not any NS. The dot sats name as the the ASCII art. I think it's really fun, super clever. I loved it. Yep, yep. And then uh, Tupac Shock uh, did some really nice ASCII art. Uh, you, you know what's neat? It's interesting about ASCII art is like there's different styles. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it's text on a page, but you know, even within that constraint, like there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, and, and this ASCII art from Tupac Shock is really beautiful. I, I'd love to know how he did it. I think it's Unicode, even. Uh oh, I interesting. ASCII characters, yeah. Okay. Can we talk about the sick burn from Easy Bake? Uh, tell us about it, Barry. Well, Easy Bake, it was yesterday, and it got, I think it got by, it might have got by us, but it certainly got by me. But uh, Easy Bake, I don't know what the original wizard was, but. Uh, Easy Bake burned and got this incredible uh, Night Bull Angus of the Spike. Uh, it is just, I'll put it, you know, I'll put, uh, I'll put the link in the secret tower. It's just, it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, ugly, scary, amazing. There's a big uh, groin cloth. Uh, and we even have, um, it looks like a prehistoric cat here, which I forget you even called. Well, you called it, but uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's a sick burn. Congrats, Easy Big. Nice. Sick burn. Um, and then uh, Nard uh, posted um, just a couple of different versions of his wizard, Magus Jaheed of the Tower. Uh, beautiful. Just just beautiful character designs. Uh, they've got a Marco Fine in there um, and a few others, uh, but just fantastic. Um and then uh, it looks like Ozma Bro had a piece, but now the tweet is unavailable. So I'm guessing he deleted it. Maybe he's going to repost. Not sure. Um, and then finally, our boy Castamir uh, with a beautiful in progress illustration of Dota. Um, my guess is that this is the final character that's going to be on that amazing piece that he did of Bear and I. Um, this is probably, I love that jacket. Yeah. I want that jacket. It, it's probably the coolest you've ever looked Dota. This illustration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, which right. is this? Wait, which is yeah. this? It's, which I is pinned this? it. I pinned it. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm looking. There's a lot of pins up here, boys. <laughs> it's at the very end. I'm going as we go. Yeah, that that is, that is it. Uh, but yeah, that's all the amazing cult content for the week. Um, if there's nothing else, Bear, play us out. Give me a second here. Uh, now I'm seeing the picture. I just, I'm, I'm kind of upset about this sketch from Casimir because it looks like Dota's cooler than me. <laughs> um, and that's, I have to say, I, when I saw that sketch of the two of you, I was like, having a bit of FOMO, a bit sad that I wasn't part of it. And I was just like, okay, well, I don't have to be in everything. It's fine. <laughs> Tear, single teardrop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play us out. This track goes out to my lovely friend in the Hall of Cats. His name is Cash. Smart, intelligent, <laughs> little, a little mean and spicy. Um, but this goes out to him because apparently it's 1999 in the Hall of Cats. Uh, we love you all.
Bye, Wizzies. Okay, I have no idea what this is. What is this? <laughs> Sounds like Bear and Sammy Kitty singing. <laughs> You guys don't know this song? Mm-hmm. No. 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 P- part of the problem is, is I can barely hear it. Yeah, Bear, I, I don't it's know, so man. quiet. It's not working? Well, maybe if you hold the phone up to the speaker better. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's not working. God darn it. Yeah, Barry, you're never hosting again. All right, let's sign off. Let's sign off. <laughs> All right, channeling out from the quantum down. <laughs> this has <is> been <laughs> Bear, <laughs> Elf, Dota, Legatus of the Black Sands Pony Racing, and all the wizards of Forgotten Runes, wizard, Wizards Cults. Channeling out. GN, everybody. Bye, wizards. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.